If you have your Bibles with you, I'd ask that you turn to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, and we're going to begin reading in verse 16. Daniel chapter 3, and beginning in verse 16. The Bible says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Amen. And he will deliver us out of thine, us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in the army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the, command, the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men which took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace, then was Nebuchadnezzar, then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselor, counselors, did, we, did not we cast three men bound into the fire? And they answered and said unto the king, cruel king, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your presence and your goodness. We thank you for this church, Lord. We pray that we would continue to stand as the day's approach of thy, of thy coming, we praise you for that. God, we pray now that you would bless your word, as you always do, and we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all, for it is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, I'll be preaching this morning, the Lord being my helper, on are you ready for the fire? And I'm not asking uh, if the fire... I'm asking you, are you ready for the fire? The fire is not questionable. It's coming. Uh, and it heats up a little bit more every day. Look around and you'll see even in our own country that this book is a despised book. That's why we're pilgrims and strangers in a strange land yeah. is because this book is not cherished. And you know what? Despite what the worldly religion may say, it will never be cherished. It will never be honored except by those who are redeemed. Now, uh, we're going to look at this in a little in a little bit more carefully in a moment, but I want you to see what got Shadrach, Meshach into the, to this point that they could stand up to the man that had their lives in their own hands was doing obedience unto God. They were strong in the faith. You know, uh, I see today that there are some people that are strong in the faith, meaning the oracles and the understanding of the doctrine of God, but they're not strong in faith. Now, there's two huge differences in that. Uh, and I think it's amazing to me that that's immediately what Brother Junior uh, was called to when he unexpectedly taught because what this chapter is about is faith. You don't get this kind of faith from everyday stuff. No. You don't get this kind of faith to answer the king, yeah, I might give up my life, but I am not going to deny my Lord. That's the type of faith that comes with years of, and years of understanding the Word of God. It comes by testing the Lord God and seeing how great and mighty that He really is. It comes by experience. Mm -hmm. It comes through time. And so we find these men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now by this point in the Scriptures, they had been down uh, 
with Nebuchadnezzar for some time. And what, what they wanted, the, meaning this government, was for them to be like everybody else. Mm -hmm. They were uh, in Babylon and they wanted them to act like yeah. Babylonians. Yeah. They wanted them to be named like Babylonians. They wanted them to appear like Babylonians. You know what the world wants for you today? The very same day. <laughs> They want you to dress like the world. They want you to look like the world. They want you to present like the world. And they want you to agree with what the world is having to say about creation, about the God of the Bible. They want you to comply. And that's exactly what Nebuchadnezzar wanted. And you know what? When you don't, the government gets mad. Uh, the leaders get upset. They, they don't know how to handle that. So we find these boys, the first thing they wanted to do was to change their identity. The government wanted them to change who they were. They were no longer Mishael and the others. Now they were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And you know what? I can't even quote all of their Jewish names. Hananiah and Mishael is the only two I ever can remember. But you know what? Uh, shame on us that we don't know their real name. That was, that was their Babylonian name. That's not who they were. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know what the world wants for you? A Babylonian name. A Babylonian identity. Uh, to look and act like and, and, and be just like the rest of the whole world. That's their desire for you. And so we find that that's... Uh, they weren't even they didn't even want to identify who they were. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered, and, and what the answer was, uh, what the question was, you bow down or you're going to die. You, you know what the world's saying to God's people this morning? You bow down or you're going to die. You look like the world, you act like the world, you worship like the world, or you're going to die. Yep. That's it. Very same message. Uh, very same song, the second verse. It's the very same thing that's happened throughout all eternity. Now, it takes strength to say no. Mm -hmm. It takes a great deal of strength. It, 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 takes a, it takes a great deal of fortitude to be ready in the day that's appointed to say, I will not do that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't get this way overnight. They didn't gain that much strength in, in, just by going on Sunday and Wednesday nights. Uh, you know, your responsibility is to study this book daily. You want to be ready for the last day? Study this book daily. Uh, prepare yourself, and I really believe these boys had done just that in, in a time way before it was called on them. Notice verse 17. They knew something about the character of God. If it, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Now, I want you to see, you don't learn the character and, and, the, and the, uh, the ability of God by routine service. You know how you have to learn about God's provision? You have to be without. You know, uh, we really depend on ourselves in the United States, don't we? Right. But you know what? Where it really comes from, it comes from God's storehouse. Uh, the, the last meal that you ate, the, the thing that you had from breakfast, it didn't come from your cupboard. It came from the storehouse of the Almighty, and He gave it to you, and it, it, it came to you, yeah. but it did not come by routine means, and we need to understand that. And so somewhere along the way, they had learned that the storehouse of God is full. They said he is able, the, the God we serve, it's within his power to deliver us. Now, uh, this is the reality of it, though, and this is where we get a little shaky. It's not always in his plan. Now, we're going to see it within the plan of God for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But you know what? It may not be in God's plan for you. You, you may have to fall off in there and, yeah. and die. Yeah. Yeah. 
But see, that doesn't change the character of God. See, they understood God was sovereign, and he did whatever he wanted to. Mm -hmm. You don't learn that just in a few days. You don't learn that by, by uh, reading one sentence in the Bible and moving on. You learn that by experience in sincere study. A sincere study. Now, I want you to see they understood he could do it. And he said, and he will deliver us out of thine hand. Now, notice it seems it almost seems like they're saying the opposite thing, but it's not. He said he's able to deliver us. And he didn't say he will deliver us from the fiery furnace. He said he'll deliver us out of your hand. That was either through death or through fiery deliverance. Either one could happen, and they knew either one could happen. But you know what? Either way, they were going to be delivered. You know what? If they cut our heads off, we're still going to be delivered, are we not? Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's, there, there's no guarantee that he's going to deliver us through the trial, but he will deliver us to be home with him. One way or the other, we're going to be delivered, and we're going to be home with the Lord Jesus Christ. And they understood, and they knew this, and they, and they give God the glory for it. Then he says in verse... 20. But if not, the flip side, we die. We burn up like the others. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods. That's a, that's a bold statement. That's something that comes through faith and experience. It does not come easily. It does not come uh, it doesn't come overnight. It takes time. He says, we are not going to serve thy gods. Now, you think about that. That comes into many things. Of course, in Babylon, they were truly an idolatrous nation, much like the Greeks and the Romans, and they had a god for every day of the week and every, and every day of the month. And, and for every situation you could think of, they had a god, but they did not have the god. And, and the whole issue was this. Nebuchadnezzar had raised up a huge statue, and he wanted it worshipped. You know what the world wants for you today? To worship this world. That's what they want. Now, uh, they'll even let you worship the person of God, as long as you don't know who the person of God is. Right. Now, if you begin to describe the character of God and his holiness and his richness and, and, and his despise of sin, then they're ready for the furnace for you too. As long as you say, God is love, man, they'll cartwheel you. But when you say, you know what? God is love, but he's also holy and righteous and sinless. And he won't tolerate men marrying men. That's right. He, he, when you get into that kind of water, you're going to end up like Shadrach and Shaq and Abednego. And, and so they just said, listen, he may not deliver us, but I want to tell you this, I will not serve your God. You know what? We need to make that determination within ourselves. And you know what? Sometimes we look, oh yeah, I can do it. Now let me say this, if you're a weak Christian, you don't know what you'll do in the last day. We think we do, don't we? But you know what? I always cling to this verse. The Lord says in the New Testament, I'll give you strength in such an hour. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. that's what I'm depending on. I'm not depending on myself. Because, you know, I, I often think of this as, as things are moving along. I, I can say a lot of things that are proudly could not. But when I look at Bella or Gracie and little AJ, and, they, and then they become the target. Not, if you don't serve, I'm going to kill you. If you don't serve, I'll kill them. That's a whole different story, isn't it? Uh, that, that's something that, that is unfathomable to me, and I can't say that I would not bow, but with God's fight, but I do know this, I'll certainly cave if I'm not ready. I certainly will cave if I'm unstudied. I certainly will cave if I haven't found the God of the Bible, try and, and test it. You know what? That's what we need. We need to understand God is able, and you don't get that from, 
from many. You get that by experience. You get that by the cover being bare, and God still and God still provides anyway. That's how you get that experience. And, and so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were ready. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Response of the world, response of the government. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. That's the world's response to you being faithful. Uh, don't expect a pat on the back. Don't expect people to applaud you. They're going, they're going to hate you. Now notice what it says. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, we'll see in a moment because we're going to look back to their spiritual preparation. But I want you to see that he had a good attitude toward these boys. Uh, we'll see that they had... They were kind of a cut above all the other Jewish prisoners. And, and he saw that, and he brought them along. But when, he, when they stood for the truth, that was it. You know when the world's going to be done with you when you stand for the truth? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's when they're going to be finished with you, and they're going to say, you know what? I didn't like you to start with. Yeah. Right. And they're going to throw you to the side. And that's exactly what... Uh, Nebuchadnezzar was doing, he, he was sent up with him, he was done, done with them simply because they would not bow. Now again, are you prepared not to bow? And, and we need to prepare ourselves spiritually because it's coming. Verse 20, and he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army, uh, uh, let me read the rest of verse 19, excuse me. Uh, Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. Now, I want you to think about this because uh, we have very good examples of furnaces like this all over Stewart County. The one at Bear Springs, the one down in Land Between the Lakes. And you look at those big towers and it's hard to imagine how they were used because all that's left is... It's the burning area. Those were huge things built around that. That was just the center of it. But you can see those things at the bottom, those openings at the bottom is where the coal went. And they would put that fire in there and they would get it harder, hotter, hotter. And toward the end, they even started where they were dump, dumping chemicals in there. Fluorine was one of the ones to make it even hotter than... Uh, <laughs> that it would melt iron. Mm -hmm. That it, it would make it like a liquid. And then it would flow out. Now, on top of all those furnaces was a roundabout built of wood. And they'd take the wagons up and they would dump the, the, the <laughs> unpure iron into there. And the good iron ran out one side and the slag ran out the other side. And they... Uh, that furnace was so hot that often men were burned just standing over it. They wore clothing or, or leather to keep themselves from the fire. But could you imagine falling off in that? Uh, you wouldn't live till you got to the bottom of it. That's what they were facing. And this was much, much, much more than what those furnaces here were about. They were facing a certainty of death. Now, I'll say this and I'll move on past the furnace, but as you know, the furnace idea was to purify the iron. What these people wanted, first they wanted them killed and, and brought out of the nation of Babylon so their idolatry would be perfect. Get, they were the slag. They were the problem. You know what the world thinks about you? They think you are the problem. And they want you cast away just like the slag out of an iron furnace. And that was their purpose here. They were going to purify their people. Verse 20, he commanded the most mighty men that were in the army 
to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. And these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst or the middle of the burning fiery furnace. I want you to see they were not excused. You, you know what? We are ready to serve God as long as He relieves us of the problem, right? Yeah. You, all, you ever prayed for money that wasn't there, but it didn't come? <laughs> right? As long as God relieves us from the burden, we're willing to bear the burden, are we not? But if it just does not go away, and it's worse tomorrow morning than it was today, we get, we, we get kind of tired with it, don't we? We get kind of disappointed and wonder why God has forsaken us. They were not excused from the furnace. They had to face it. You know what? There are some things you're going to have to face in your service to God. And whether you like it or not, you're going to have to face it. And these boys did it too. Verse 22, to show you how hot it was, Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flames of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, I want you to see this. The world, just like the devil, has no care for their people. That's right. You think Shadrach, Meshach, I mean, excuse me, you think uh, the Babylonian king had any concern at all about those boys that died that took them up there? He could care less. You know what the devil uh, <laughs> thinks of lost people? He could care less. That's right. He, you know, uh, as long as you die and go to hell, he could care less about you. And when you get to hell, he's going to care less about you. That, that, that's, and, and so uh, the Babylonian king was very much like unto Satan himself and let his own people die to carry out punishment that did not belong to those boys. That's how they were. Fully dressed, they were cast in. Uh, verse 22, and therefore, uh, uh, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished, or astonished, and rose in haste and spake to, uh, and said unto his counselor, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said, True, o king, unto the king, true, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Now, you find these little people that say Jesus didn't exist in Tibet and Bethlehem, you show them this one. There was Jesus in the very midst of them, walking around, and the only thing that burned was the cords, the things that had them bound. How did they get this experience with Christ? Because they were ready. They had been strengthened. They had, they understood that denying this world would put them in a wonderful relationship with Christ. Remember Moses when he was up on the mountain? His one desire was to see the Lord God. And uh, the Lord God said, no man can see, see me and live. And you know what? Moses didn't care. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thought. And you know, you remember how that whole relationship started at the backside of the desert? He first said, his first day was to hide his head, yeah. to hide his eye against God. Yeah. And after 40 years, he was so close unto God, he wanted to see him. How did that happen? It happened to facing Pharaoh 10 times. It happened to leading a very rebellious people for 40 years. It, it happened by experience. You know when you're going to be ready for the fire? Through experience. Uh, through situations that come 
across your life and come through your life and make you stronger on the other side. Now, very quickly, Daniel chapter 1, I want you to see the preparation of these young men. Uh, the first thing that you have to know and understand is you're not going to be here. You're not going to be able to stand unless you're genuinely saved. Now, these were Jewish boys in that day, in that time, being Jew Jewish, because God the Father's relationship was only with the Jews. They had to be in the bloodline. You know what they were? Praise God this morning, I'm in the bloodline of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why it was a bloody, horrible death on the cross of Calvary, is because he made me into the bloodline. And that's exactly what the, these boys were Jewish from the inside straight out. And that, that was a necessity in that day. Uh, you know why people fail today many times? They're lost. That, that's the problem. You know why people desire the world and the things of this world and the things this world has to offer and the garments of this world is because they've never been converted to start with. Hard, 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 hard stuff. That, that isn't a cartwheel sermon, is it? Is it? But it is true. You, you know what? When someone is genuinely saved, it'll break out on break out on not chicken pox. You ever had the chicken pox? I was sick as a dog with the chicken pox. Judy got some bumps and she looked like she could go and swim across the creek. I felt so bad I literally thought I was going to die. But you know, prior to breaking out, I felt like mud. The day before I started breaking out, my first grade teacher, Miss Dean Gray, she felt sorry on me because I literally laid down in the playground and went to sleep. That's how sick I was. And then the next day I popped out. That, that's the nature of redemption. It's inside and then it's going to come out. These boys were just like that. They, they, they were in the bloodline and notice, notice the challenges and the blessings. Verse 1 of Daniel chapter 1, the Bible says, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon and Jerusalem, and besieged it. Uh, the devil was going to besiege this church. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, unto his hand, meaning Nebuchadnezzar, uh, with part of the vessels. Now, I have that underlined in my Bible, uh, and you do too. Uh, because he didn't get the full victory, did he? He got part of the precious vessels down at the house of God. Um, rest of that verse, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God and brought the vessels unto the treasure of his God. Now, I want you to see they wanted God's vessels down at the idolatrous temple. You know, uh, look look around, what is it, uh, not even a dozen of us this morning? Wouldn't it be wonderful to go where there's about 85 people coming? That is placing God's vessels in an idolatrous camp. That is placing God's vessels, the truly redeemed, into the Babylonian area. We don't, we don't need to be there. Our vessels belong in the house of God. And that's exactly what happened here in Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, wanted those things in his house. Verse 3. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, and he showed uh, and, and that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, of the king's seed, and of the princes, children whom was no blemish, well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace whom they might teach the learning and the and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Now I want you to see, not only did he want the literal vessels of the temple, he wanted the people of the temple. Notice who they were. They were the king's son and people in line for the priesthood. You know what church he wants our children, does he not? Yes. He wants our children. 
Um, I was saying something about my opinion of the public school uh, Friday at work, and man, I thought I was going to get stoned before I got out of there. God preserved me. Uh, you, you know what? They want your children. They do. And, and that's not a new tactic. As you can see, uh, 2,000 years before Christ, they were doing it then. And notice they didn't just want God's children. They wanted the cream of the crop. Uh, have you ever wondered why he wanted the best ones? Because the best people have influence over everybody else. And, and so he wanted the very best of the best so he can influence the nation and make out of them Chaldeans. Uh, verse 4, uh, verse 5, excuse me. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of wine which he drank. So nourishing them three years, and at the end thereof, they might stand before the king. Now, the world wants on you a worldly diet. But you just remember this, in ingesting that worldly diet, you will not be ready in the day. You will not be ready when the challenge comes. You will not be ready when you face the fire. You know what God shot? What got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego ready was staying on the right diet. You know what's going to get you ready? Staying on the right diet. Staying on the things that are fit for the people of God. Uh, that that, that uh, looks unto godliness as, a, as an important attribute. Uh, verse 5. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Judah Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. That is this very same folks with their good Jewish name. Unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belshazzar, and, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. Change their identity. You know what the devil wants to do with you? Change your identity. Get you out there looking and acting and smelling just like the rest of the world. Verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. You see what was important and Daniel knew it was what you eat. Now, I'm probably one of the worst in the building about it, but uh, watching TV. <laughs> but you know what? That's, not, that's the king's meat. That's stuff we don't necessarily need, and that might actually hinder us. You know, you know, and we'll see in a minute, and I read one commentary. It was um, like mush, and Donna read another commentary. It's more like vegetables, so I don't know which it is, but you know, both are pretty plain. Mush, I mean like uh, oatmeal or uh, grits. Yeah. And even if it's vegetables, you know what? I get burnt out on vegetables, don't you? But they chose, you know, you know what's going to get you ready for that time? A very plain diet of Scripture. Now, let's all be honest. <laughs> We're not careful. Sometimes that book gets boring, does it not? I mean, but you know, for God's people, there's always something new, is there not? There's always something rich. And the longer that I try to serve Him, the more rich the Word of God gets. At one time, when I was a young Christian, things I would have choked on, just like a baby choking on a steak, is now so rich and full to me. And that's where we need to be. So these boys started out on a very, very plain and simple diet. <clears throat> verse 8. But uh, we read that. Uh, <clears throat> verse 9. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and tender love of the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my Lord. <clears throat> who have appointed your meat and your drink, for why should ye see your face worse like in, unto the children which are of your sort? 
than you make me endanger my head to the king. Now, not understanding the God of the Bible, <laughs> he thought these this diet, this very plain diet of vegetables or oatmeal or whatever it was, certainly not a piece of steak and a glass of wine, was going to hinder the children of Israel. And you know what? It will hinder the lost. And the ones with the other meat, man, they were glad, weren't they? You know what the world loves? Emotion. You know what the world likes? A good time. Right. If it's here or if it's in a bar room somewhere, all they feast on is a really good time. But Daniel said, me and these three boys, we want the plain stuff. And you know what the miraculous thing by the hand of God, when it came the day for inspection, they looked better than the people that were on the world's diet. And you know what? They continued on to that plain, regular diet until the day they faced the furnace. So what's going to get you ready? Keep eating. You get all you can uh, from that word on a daily basis. Listen to preaching. Study the word of God. Huh. Meditate on the word of God. And you'll be ready. You'll be ready. And God will give you the strength. But you're not going to be ready with a steady diet of the world's steak. You're not going to be ready with entertainment. You're not going to be ready by entertaining yourself. Only thing that will prepare you is this right here. And I ask you because it's very important. Are, are you ready? What diet uh, do you enjoy? Uh, if the furnace faced you today, what are you going to do? Uh, don't you think in the days in which we live that's a very real question? I believe it is. Uh, this world is in a mess, is it not? It seems like it grows worse every day. The furnace is raging. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? Where will we stand? 